Let's have a go at solving some equations for x. I think the easiest way to learn how to do these kind of questions is just by seeing lots of examples. So I think we'll dive straight in and have a go at some questions. There are just two key points I want to mention first. So when you see a question that says solve for x, remember that aim is to get x on one side of the equal sign on its own. So we want to end up with something saying x equals and then a number. And the second key point is, remember, if you do one thing to one side of the equation, you do the same thing on the other side. And just using this, we should be able to solve these equations for x. So let's have a look at question one here. So question one says, solve for x, x minus 13 equals 2. So I'm going to write out the question at the top first. So x minus 13 equals 2. So we want to get x on its own on one of the sides. So you want to think, what can we do to help get x on its own? So the x is currently on this left hand side. So you can kind of see that if we can get rid of this 13, we'll end up with x on its own on the left hand side. So in order to get rid of this minus 13, if you plus 13, it will take this number term to zero. So we want to plus 13 on the left hand side. So if you plus 13 on this left hand side, you're going to get, so we've got x, minus 13 and then we're plusing 13 and that's going to equal and remember you do the same thing whatever you do on this left hand side we're going to do it on this right hand side too so we're going to plus 13 here as well so that's plusing 13 on both sides and now we can simplify this we can combine the number terms so here minus 13 plus 13 is just zero so we're going to have x on its own here and 2 plus 13 is 15. So we can write 15 on this side. So in fact, that's our answer. We've got x on its own, and so we've solved for x because we know the answer is x equals 15. So all we had to do was just think, what do we have to do on this left-hand side to get x on its own? And the answer was plusing 13. Normally I wouldn't write out this step, so um, once you've had a bit of practice at this, you can sort of see straight away if you plus 13 here, you're going to get x on its own because you can think in your head minus 13 plus 13 will be zero so you know that it's going to be x and then you do in your head 2 plus 13 15 so you get x equals 15 as the answer and what's really nice about these sort of questions is you can check them really easily so because we've solved this question for x we've found the value of x that makes the statement true we can just check it so is it true that 15 minus 13 equals 2 and yes, it is. So we know that we've got the correct answer. Let's try another question. Okay, solve for x, 5x equals 3x plus 6. So let's write the question out first. So 5x equals 3x plus 6. Now we want to get x equals something. So a good strategy is to get all the x's on one side and all the number terms on another side. So here we've got x's on the left hand side and the right hand side. And that's kind of annoying because we want just x's on their own on one side. So let's try and fix that. How can we get rid of the x's on one of the sides? Well, how about we minus the 3x from this side? So we get rid of the x's on this side. So if we minus 3x from here, we're going to have to minus 3x from this side too. Let's do this. Let's do 5x. So we're going to minus 3x on both sides. So hopefully you can see if I minus 3x here, that's just going to be 0. So we can get rid of this term. So we get 6 on this side. So that's by minusing 3x, minusing 3x to both sides. Now, because these terms both have a single x in, we can combine them. So 5x minus 3x is 2x. So we have 2x equals 6. Okay, that's looking quite good. So we've got x's on one side, numbers on the other, which is a good stage to be at. But now we want to get x on its own. Currently, we've got 2 times x equals something. We just want x equals something. So you've got to think, how can we get rid of this 2? So currently we have 2 times x equals 6. So if we divide this left-hand side by 2, we'll just get x on its own here. On this left-hand side, we're just going to get x. And on this right-hand side, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So there we go, we have our answer, x equals 3. We've got x on its own on one of the sides, so we're finished. And remember, these questions are really cool because we can check that we've got the right answer. So we've said x equals 3, so it means this equation must be true if x equals 3. On this left-hand side, we have 5x equals, so x is 3, so 5 times 3, which is 15. 
And on this right hand side, we have 3x plus 6. And we have x is 3 here. So we've got 3 times 3 plus 6. That's 9 plus 6. And that equals 15 as well. So we've checked that this answer satisfies this. So we're definitely correct. So it's a really great way you can check in an exam and you know you've got the full marks for the question. Let's try another question. So we have solve for x, 20 plus x equals 25. So let's write that down here. Okay, so remember our aim is to get x equals something. So we want to get all the numbers on one side and all the x's on one side. So we can see we've got this x on the left hand side. So let's keep the x's on this left hand side and let's move all the numbers to the right hand side. So we want to get rid of that 20. So we just have x on its own. And so to get rid of 20, we're going to need to minus the 20 from that side. If we minus 20, so remember if we do it on the left hand side, we're going to have to do it on the right hand side as well. We're going to end up with x on this left hand side. 20 minus 20 is zero, so we can just ignore that term. And this is going to be 25 minus 20 here. So I'll write it out, but you might be able to do that step straight away in your head because now we can simplify this right hand side to get x equals 5. So 25 minus 20 is just 5, so we can write that there. And so that's our answer. And you can check it straight away. 20 plus 5 is 25, so we know we're correct. Let's try another question. So this question says, solve for a, 3a equals a minus 2. So don't be put off by the fact it says a instead of x. We're going to do the same thing, it's just this time we want to have a equals something. So the question is 3a equals a minus 2. As we said before, the best strategy is to get all the a's on one side and all the numbers on the other side. So here, let's bring all the a's to the left hand side. So we want to get rid of the a here. To get rid of this a, we're going to have to minus that a from this side. So let's minus a from the right hand side. So we want to minus a here. And so as a result, we're going to have to minus a here as well. So then on the left hand side, we have 3a minus a equals, we're doing a minus a, so that's going to go to zero. So we can ignore that. And that's going to equal minus two. These terms both have a single a in, so we can simplify this. 3a minus a is going to be 2a, and we can just rewrite that on the right hand side here, so 2a equals minus 2. Okay, we're looking good, we've got the a's on one side, the numbers on the other side. We now just want to have a equals something on its own. So here we have 2 times a equals something. So remember now, to just get a on its own, that means we're going to have to divide by the number in front of the a. To go from 2a to a, we're going to want to divide by 2. And so now we need to divide the other side by 2 as well. So dividing this by 2, you get a minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. So the answer is a equals minus 1. Let's do our usual check. So on this left hand side, we have 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. And on the right hand side, we have a, which is minus 1, minus 2 equals minus 3. Ah, and these are the same, so we know we're correct. Let's try another question. Okay, so solve for x, 5x plus 2 equals 10 plus 3x. Let's write it down first. We want to get the x's on one side, numbers on the other. So let's bring the x's to the left hand side. So we want to get rid of the x's on the right hand side. So we've got a plus 3x here. To get rid of this, we want a minus 3x. So let's minus 3x from this side. So we need to minus it from this side as well. So we've got 5x plus 2 minus 3x equals 10, because 3x minus 3x just goes to 0. OK, so we've brought the x's onto this side. Note that we can combine these terms, because we have x's here and a single x here and a single x here. So 5x minus 3x is 2x. We have 2x plus 2 equals 10. Now we've still got a number term here and we want the numbers on the other side. So to get rid of the plus 2 on the left hand side, we can minus 2. Let's minus 2 from this side. And so then we need to minus 2 from this side as well. So then we get 2x equals 10 minus 2. So we get 2x equals, so 10 minus 2 is 8. So again, you can, when you get more confidence, skip that step there because you can just think in your head 10 minus 2 will be 8 and you don't need to write 10 minus 2 out like that. Okay, so we have 2x equals 8. 
So we've got two times x equals eight. We just want x on its own. So in order to undo this two times x, we want to divide by two. So if we divide the left-hand side by two, so we need to do that over here as well. Two x divided by two is just the x that we want on its own. Eight divided by two is four. So we have our answer, x equals four. And again, you can sub that in here and check. So five times four, 20 plus two is 22. And here, 10 plus three times four. So 10 plus 12 is 22. So we get 22 on both sides, so we know we're correct. Let's try another question. So this says solve for y, one plus two y equals minus five minus y. So again, um, the fact that it says y instead of x, it doesn't matter, we're doing the same thing. We just got y instead of x as the symbol. So we want to get y equals something. So let's write down the question as usual. So one plus two y equals minus five minus y. Okay, so let's bring all the y's to one side. So let's just bring them to the left-hand side, why not? We wanna get rid of the y on this right-hand side. So here we have minus y, so to get rid of it, we want a plus y on this side. So that's plus y. And so then we need to do that on this side too. So then we've got one plus two y plus our y here, minus five minus y plus y. So the y's will cancel, so we just get minus five. So we've got rid of the y here like we wanted. And because we have two terms with a y in, we can combine them. So two y plus y is gonna be three y. So we get one plus three y equals minus five. Cool. We have a number here that we want to get rid of. We want to bring it onto this side. So to get rid of the one on the left-hand side, we want to minus a one. So it's minus one here. So we need to do that over here too. One minus one will go to zero. So we can ignore that. So we've got three y equals, and I'm not going to write this out this time. We're going to skip a step. So minus five minus one will be minus six. So we can just write minus six straight away here. If you feel more comfortable, you can write minus five, minus one, and then do another line and then simplify it. Okay, so we've now got three y equals minus six. So we want to get y on its own. And um, currently we've got three times y. So in order to undo the three times bit, the opposite of times is divide. So we need to divide by three. So let's divide this side by three. So we need to divide that one by three as well. So on the left hand side, three y divided by three is just going to be y minus six divided by three is minus two. So we have our answer, y equals minus two. And if you want, you can check that in there and you'll see you get the right answer. Okay, let's do a final question here. So we've got solve for x, oh, well, this is quite long, two x plus x minus two equals 10 plus three. Let me write that out here. Okay, so in this one, the first thing um, that I notice is that We've got some terms that we can combine already. So 10 plus three, we, we know what this is. We can combine those two terms. So we can write on the right hand side that we've got 13 over here. We can simplify that. And also here, we already have two terms that have x's in. We've got two x plus x. So we can combine these terms too. Two x plus x is three x. So we can just straight away simplify this expression we're not changing anything to either side, we're literally just rewriting this in a nicer way. So it's a good thing to sort of look for before you begin to see if you can make it look a bit nicer. This is something we're more familiar with now. We've got x's on the left hand side, we now want to put all the numbers on the right hand side. So we want to get rid of that minus two. So to get rid of the minus two, we want a plus two on this side. So that's plus two over here. Then we get three x, so on this side, we're minusing two and plusing two, so the two's cancel, so we just get three x. 13 plus two will go to 15. So we get three x equals 15. Because we've got three times x and we just want x on its own, the reverse of times is divide. So let's divide by the number in front of the x. Let's divide by three. So we're dividing here by three. So we have to do it over here as well. So this left-hand side is gonna go to x. Three x divided by three is x. 15 divided by three is five. So our answer is x equals five. And again, if you put this in here, you'll see that you get both sides equaling 13, I think, yeah. So you can check straight away that you've got the right answer. So just remember, you wanna try get x's on one side, numbers on the other side, and you want to try and end up with just x equals something with the x on its own. And really important that every time you do a step, you do it to both sides. If every time you do a step, you do it to both sides, you can't really go too far wrong.
And always remember that these are really nice questions because you can check your answer and know that you're correct. If you're feeling confident with these, have a look at some of the harder questions on my next video. Thanks for watching. Here's another video I think you'll like. Here's another video YouTube thinks you'll like. I have no idea what it is. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. Who knows? If you like this video and want to see more aesthetic messy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe.